Hello. So in this video, we'll be talking about the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis. So how does that begin? So the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis, the signal for the apoptosis comes from outside the cell. And for the definition of apoptosis, please check out my previous video. I have explained that. So today I'll discuss about the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis. So it all started with a ligand known as fast ligand so upon some signals from the external source there are lymphocytes mostly t lymphocyte and nk cells they carry this fast ligand with them and this fast ligand attaches with the receptor on the cell cell surface so on this cell surface there are receptors which which detects the fast ligand and the extrinsic pathway begins like that so as you can see here, this is the cell membrane. So this is the cell membrane and it is the receptor. So this is the receptor. So this is the receptor present on outer side of the cell membrane and it is attached to a internal domain. So this is known as the FADD. So it was, it is fast associated death domain or some people simply calls it death domain. So it is the FADD, it is known as fast associated death domain or simply death domain. So the receptor is connected to this death domain and after the attachment of the fast, it gets activated. So here as you can see this orange color it is the fast ligand which comes along with the lymphocyte. So the fast ligand is on the surface of the lymphocyte and comes along it and now it attaches with this receptor and this FADD fast associated dead domains get activated. So in this video you will be seeing a lot of molecules and they have some subunits. And the subunits of different molecules having the same color means they uh, they contain the same subunits. So here, as you can see, this fat adapter protein. So this fat adapter protein contains two subunits. One is the death affected domain known as DED, and another is the same molecule that was present on the internal domain before. So these two are same subunits but present on different different molecules so here it is attached with this fat adapter protein and it is containing a different subunit which is this death affected domain ded so as you can see here the both molecule combined the internal domain and the fat adapter protein combined and form dimer with each other because they are having the same subunits so now what happens another molecule comes which is known as procaspase 8. So this procaspase 8 got some subunits and the main subunit that is similar with this whole complex is this dead affected domain. So these both are having this same subunits the dead affected domain. The further procaspase 8 contains a pre-domain one large subunit and one small subunit donated by their respective color. So these two pink colored subdomain of both these molecules are same. So now they will form a dimer also. So now as you can see the fat adapter protein which is this protein. So this is the internal domain. So this is the fat adapter protein. This was the internal domain. This was the receptor and this was the procaspase 8. So all these combined with each other by their similar subunits and they formed a complex known as DISC. It is called death inducing signaling complex. So this got created by the association of all these different molecules. So now this will activate the procaspase 8 into caspase 8. So now what happens that the procaspase 8 in this disc complex get detached. So this pro domain remains intact with this disc complex 
but the remaining procast space 8 from here it gets detached out so let's see how does this happen so as you can see here the procast space 8 got converted into cast space 8 so still now it is not in its fully active form so it got detached from the disk complex now it remains as an individual entity so now this will combine with another cast space 8 and again it, it will form a dimer so after that the activation of cast space 8 will occur so as you can see these two are the larger subunits and these two are the smaller subunits so they got combined with each other and from the active procast space 8 now this will show its effect now this active cast space 8 will convert the procast space 3 into cast space 3 the final step almost the final step of the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis So here you can see the procast space 3 get converted into active cast space 3. Now the active cast space 3 will activate the nucleus. So how does it happen? Let's see. So here you can see that the cast space 3 is converting the inactive nucleus into active nucleus. So before it was inhibited or it was inactive due to this inhibitor attached with it. So now the in inhibitor got removed and it is converted into an active form of nucleus and now it will show its digestive property upon the nuclear material present inside the cell. As I have told you the digestion of nuclear material of the cell will occur but along with it there will be another side reaction by the caspase 8 also. So as you can see the caspase 8 as I have told you will do another reaction it will convert the bid into T bid and now this T bid will activate the backs T bid activates the backs and this backs create pores on the mitochondrial membrane and from that pores the cytochrome C get released out so the cytochrome C get released out now the cytochrome C combines with the APF1 protein and it will together the activate the pro caspase 9 into caspase 9 similar to the intrinsic pathway so this will convert the pro, pro caspase 9 into caspase 9 now this caspase 9 will activate the pro caspase 3 into caspase 3 so the same reaction will be done by the caspase 9 as it was done by the caspase 8 so this will destroy the whole cell by digesting the nuclear material inside this cell so this is the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis i hope you like this video so please give a thumbs up and do subscribe this channel stay healthy bye